I'm Jeff Wright, and welcome to the Blame to Fame podcast. As an entrepreneur, I have not only built an extremely successful business from scratch, but also employed thousands of men and women and helped them on their path to financial freedom. One of the most common themes for me and everyone else who has succeeded is that we never blame anyone and are aware that our success or failures fall solely on our shoulders. It was not until I hit rock bottom that I realized that only I alone could change my future. And on my podcast, you're going to hear the stories of successful folks who have gone from blame to fame in their own lives. I look forward to sharing my journey and great guests that will educate you about their path to success. Please join me each week on the Blame to Fame podcast. Hello, I am Jeff Wright. Welcome to Blame to Fame, to where we try to help people take all the blame that they have in their life and burn it as fuel to take them to the next level. And I have a very special guest, Mr. Omar Madrano, a fellow Floridian over on the East Coast. And Omar is a serial entrepreneur and business coach who helps people crush their fear to move forward. He has a book called What If It Worked or What If It Did Work, which uh, I really like. And I also like the fact that you're known as the vacation CEO. All about scaling, brother. All about How cool scaling. is that? The, the <laughs> That's vacation actually the CEO. name of my second book coming out. So, um, you know, I really, I, I've not read the book, but what, you know, what if it did work? It, it tells me that there are so many people out there, Omar, that, that just, they, they, they don't try it because they're, they're afraid. They're, they're afraid of, of, of the risk that, that they'll take financially. But also, I think that the reason why a lot of people don't follow their dreams and follow their passions is simply because they're afraid of the opinions of other people, what their family's oh going to think and all that. Big it's time. a shame. Big time. It's the fear of the fear of success, which is just as bad as fear of failure. You, you'll hear so many people. It, it's because, you know, they, they watch the Hollywood movies. The guy has the monocle. He's the evil doer. Of course, he's good looking if he's on Hallmark for a lifetime. And he's just greedy. He's mean. But that's, that's the furthest thing from the truth. The only thing success and money does, it's an amplifier. If you're an amazing guy, you'll be Daddy Warbucks times 100. If, if you're, I, I know plenty of mean, grouchy, poor people. It's just an amplifier. It's just an amplifier. You're right. I mean, if, you, if, if you're a nice guy broke, you're going to be a great guy wealthy. You know, if you're, a, if you're a dick when you're broke, when you got money, you're going to be a bigger dick. <laughs> ain't, ain't, ain't that ain't, ain't that ain't that the truth and the, and the c word if you're a woman too which we won't say because no we won't do that no we won't but but yes yes no i've in fact i know people and it's not a female or a male thing because I've, I've grown up with people that that love me that support me that want want me to excel and want everybody to excel that's the person in abundance and there's those that are mediocre that just suck that quit dreaming and that they, they they want or they see me as like the villain and what my success your success has nothing to do with them sucking it really doesn't it's a person that quit dreaming a person that quit believing in themselves they don't believe in god they don't believe in themselves but yet they're hurting yet they're living paycheck to paycheck Yet they're in debt because of circumstances or because the man, the one percent. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's funny because, you know, you have a lot of people out there, you know, there a lot of times I think that that as children, your, your beliefs are locked in by the time you're eight or nine years old. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is, you know, I have a four year old grandson. And right now he's just absolutely fearless. He, you know, you know, he does all this crazy stuff and everybody thinks it's funny, which it is, but you know, sooner or later, the sad part is he's going to go to kindergarten soon. He's going to start going to school and he's going to be told to shut up. He's going to be told to do what he's told. 
Um, and, and I think that's the way that a lot of it works, particularly in, in public schools. You know, they, they, they want you to shut up. They don't want you to think for themselves. They don't teach anything about entrepreneurship because all they want you to do is be an obedient worker, buy a house, get in debt, retire and die, make room for the next Amen. Career. The school system, I've, I've been out 31 years. The school system has not changed. And if we no. had Marty McFly's time machine, that badass DeLorean, and went back to the 50s and 40s and 30s, what school is teaching people is, is how to shut up, clock in, clock out, be part of the machine. Don't dream. Don't work on your dreams, but work on the man's dream. And, and when I mean the man, corporate America. Have oh, yeah. someone boss. <laughs> Home, all homework is, is, hey, I need you to do this busy work. I need you to do these TPS reports. Have you found out what we're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do? That's why when you work for a boss and not a leader, they'll give you a handbook the size of War and Peace telling you what you cannot do because they want you under their thumb. And that's what school's flawed. In fact, you're right. When a person... We're, what God created all this, we weren't, we didn't have all these fears. Fear no. was placed within us by our family, by our friends, by the school system to quote unquote, to protect us. Don't talk to strangers. Don't act out. Don't be different. And you know, that, that molds our personality. And what sucks is once you have that personality within you, we don't change. The only thing we can do is we, we, we can be aware of the circumstances and then wait, go, go past our comfort zone. In the book, that's why I just, I, I was the biggest introvert. I had the fear of failure. I, I had the fear of not being worthy. I had the fear of rejection. I couldn't even ask out a girl because God forbid she said no. So yeah. I had to go from that guy to being a top salesman as a financial advisor to being an entrepreneur and not ask, and being able to ask any question because you know what the more no's you get the more successful you are and if i did ask out a girl and she said no hey you know what on to the next but before i thought the miami herald was going to publish a front page article saying omar madrano got rejected you know i i had a friend of mine one time ask me because i we had talked before before the show um, you know, I got divorced seven years ago and then I got remarried, you know, something that I didn't think I would ever do. Um, uh, really, really glad that I did. I'm really blessed with amazing woman. Um, but you know, she's beautiful. She really is. She looks like a, a Barbie doll. You know, she's from Russia, uh, you know, long blonde hair, tall, beautiful. And people ask me, well, how did you land such a beautiful woman like that? I said, I just asked her. That's all. I just asked her. That's it. What if she said no? Well, if she said no, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't have her before. So what have I got to lose by asking? What mm -hmm. if it did work? Exactly. What, exactly. Exactly. What if it did work? Um, and, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, I was talking to, I was talking to a guy that worked with me uh, not long ago and he was talking about, you know, he was dating someone and he was in a, in a terrible relationship, but he, he didn't want to, to break up with her because he was afraid that, you know, he wouldn't find anyone else or anything like that. I said, have you ever taken, you ever taken the train? Cause he lived in Atlanta. There's a Marta train. It runs like every 10 minutes. He, he says, well, yeah. I said, if you miss the eight o'clock train, do you really get upset? He says, uh, no. I said, why? He says, well, because there's another train coming. I said, yeah. If you miss the eight o'clock train, don't worry. There's one coming at 810. If you miss that one, there's another one coming at 820. So the, the same thing is with, 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 with people like that. It, 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 you know, never get upset about, about losing something because there's always something coming down the pike later it's abundance and everything it, yeah and uh, soulmates quote unquote there's an abundance if somebody doesn't want to be with you next the business opportunities a lot of times people chase sales they discount themselves they discount their product because they're in scarcity 
because they're like, oh my gosh, how about if this person doesn't buy? But you know what? Who the hell cares, man? There's, you know, nobody has 100% penetration. Apple doesn't. Uh, um, Walt Disney World never had 100%. And you, Nike, and if they don't, and they're thriving, you can too. You don't look, even 100%. if you live in Mayberry, there's still enough people and there's still enough resources and, and everything go around. Yeah. You know, and, and, and like, like people are also afraid uh, of, of what, what their family is going to think. It, it's, it's amazing to me because I've done very well in life. Uh, and I, I had a, I had a discussion with my cousin not long ago, who's really successful in, in the field that he's in. And he kind of deals with the same thing. He's got family that, that have kind of shunned him or whatever. Uh, it, you know, it almost seems like it's jealousy. And he and I had a conversation about it and he hit the nail on the head to me. He said that, that the re it's not that they're upset with you. They're upset with themselves because they weren't brave enough to take the chances to make the moves that, that you made. That's a hundred percent true. Yeah. You know, and, and I also believe too, that when, when people wish you well, most people, when they wish you well, and they tell you that they're in your corner, they're not, they don't really, they'll tell you that, but they don't want you to do better than them. They, they just, you know, it, it, it's like with my insurance group, I've got tons of guys that make more money that work with me than actually take home more money than I do. I wish they all did. You know, I, I really do. I wish they, they all did because the more successful they are, the more successful I'm going to be. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, when, when I see success and I see other people thriving and winning, I, I never, I don't get jealous. I, I don't have animosity. I don't have hate. The, there's only one thing it might do. It might motivate me to get off my ass and say, I'm not hustling enough, but yeah. I, I'll be everybody's biggest cheerleader. I, I love seeing people go past their comfort zone and just score some major wins. Oh yeah. And yeah. Because you got, you know, there's so many people that are, that are just haters. You got haters on social media. You got, you know, haters in your life, but most of the haters that you have out there are, are people that are really hating on their own problems. I, I had a guy, one of the things that, that, uh, you know, I have an elite thing for my agents that I do where we, we train them in, into sales and negotiations. And one of the hardest things for them to do is to pick up a phone and do a, a Facebook live selfie video. It's incredibly difficult for them to do that because they're, they're afraid of the haters they're going to get. And one guy, one guy said, you know, this guy, uh, I don't even know who he was, told me I look retarded. And he told me this. I said, why are you listening to him? This is a guy sitting in his mom, his mom's basement watching porn and eating Hot Pockets. You're going to you're going to you're going to base your future on what some low life dipshit says. But that's the problem, you know, with the, with people listen to one or two things and it just totally derails uh, uh, their plans. And, you know, they, they hear one hater or one bit of criticism and it derails them into thinking it's not possible and it's all bullshit. Oh, it is. And you know what? I use that as rocket fuel. I, yeah. I, I use that. That's why on my social media, everything is open. And if somebody wants to take a shot at me, I mean, I, I even had supposedly, she said she was my biggest fan. She quickly became my biggest hater. And it was a, a, a woman that I grew up with that we started dating like a couple of years ago. And then she wanted me to go down to her level of yeah. middle class. And that, that's, that's not who I am. Or, and, you know, she said, who was I to write a book? Or who the hell wants to hear me speak? Who's going to listen to my podcast? Well, you know what? Clearly you're not next and the story yeah and if if you don't have a hater that means that you're not going way past people's comfort zone the more haters you have to me that means you're super successful donald trump had has 
super amount of haters. And I'm not even going to be political. I'll, I'll pick the other side. Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton. It doesn't matter. They all do. They, everybody has. Could you imagine if Bill Clinton said he, he never ran for president because people were taking shots because he was from Arkansas or Mike Huckabee, who grew up from the same small town of Hope, Arkansas, two guys in the middle of the woods went way beyond what anything was expected and yeah. both had haters. You know, all you have to do is shrug and laugh because if you quit dreaming, if you quit thriving, if you quit trying to be the person that you were meant to be, if you quit on your dreams and your goals because of a hater, that's super sad. Yeah, it is. You know, I, I know a number personally know a number of politicians and the one thing, you know, they're on both sides of the aisle, but the one thing that I have to ad admire about them is they have what I would call unabated ruthlessness in that they have absolute Teflon on their skin. Everything bounces off of them. You could say the worst things about them and they'll smile. They could care less. Exactly. They, they sleep they, at they, night. That, that's what people need to learn. Yeah. Who cares? Literally, there's nobody that's better than you that's going to take a shot at you. It's always people way beneath you that 100%. quit your dreams. They never even went after a dream. They, you know, misery loves company. The yeah. thing is, not only will they be hit by the pain of regret, but they have this numb feeling in their soul that little voice in their head that keeps them up at night. And they think by knocking other people, it will make them feel better. What's going to make them feel better is having the courage to commit and to believe in themselves to actually do something. Yeah. And, and I think you're right. I've never known anyone who was, who had excelled at anything. Uh, it really doesn't matter in business, sports, whatever. If they truly had excelled at anything, they don't hate on anybody for nothing. They, they, they really don't. No, they, in fact, they, they really don't. Others, as long as it's uh, sports, as long as it's not, you, in, you know, a competitor. But yeah. yeah, of course, we don't. When you have success, a person that's successful has the abundance mindset that, hey, you know, it's not scarce. It's not just for me. It's, it's, that's why, you know, you had the Kobe Bryant's, the Wayne Gretzky's, the, in sports, the elites. That, that's why you would see Bill Gates hanging out in, in Omaha, Nebraska with Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett. All yeah. these people. That's why LeBron hangs out with Warren Buffett, a 90-year-old with a 38-year-old a man or whatever. And it's because successful people love to see others succeed and they want to be in the same room with other successful people because it's about learning something different from someone else i it's think it's I, I think there's another thing to that too is that when you're with other successful people to 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 become truly great at anything i, I think you'll agree uh sports art business anything like that to become truly great, you have to have a, a high level of obsession of what you're doing. Oh, a very high level of, of obsession. And even though, even though like LeBron and 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 Warren Buffett have little in common, you know, personally and whatnot, they share that obsessiveness. Both of them do. And and when you're with other obsessive people. It, it helps feed on what you're doing because most people in this world are not obsessive. Oh no. Not, and, and they don't understand it. And they're going to think you're weird and, and they're not going to be in your corner. So, so why, why, why give them the time of day? You know, the masses right now, we're taping this on a Friday. If we went on social media now, people are all excited mm -hmm. about the, it's the weekend and they're yeah. asking for suggestions. Hey, should I watch Ozark? What, what, what shall I, I piss the rest of my whole weekend on? Or, oh my gosh, it's, all, it's, it's almost happy hour. So you're, you're, you're actually happy at the fact that you barely put 40 hours 
minimal work enough not to get fired for some major corporation and now you're you're what, all happy until sunday night comes around or monday morning and then you're going to post oh my gosh i'm having a bad case of the mondays yeah all those guys think about it charlie munger and warren buffett are way past, they they have both their feet in the grave while while, while the grave diggers actually throwing dirt on their feet and they're still going at it they're still while, going at it like relentlessly like the day they retire is the day you read about them in the obituary but while some guy out there who don't they're not going to listen to neither one of us because podcasts it's it's better to listen to howard stern on on sirius xm or or pandora yeah. or or you know, something and, and griping about their life and their circumstances some guy is in some cubicle saying well i've got 14 more years of working until i retire successful people never retire and in sports they retire literally when they yank the jersey off off of them because father time is cruel in sports yeah actually i was surprised our boy brady here retired i was really surprised that he did well they they say and he might he might he might come back for that to play in the Bay Area, his lifelong and dream of the 49ers. He is, uh, and he is an absolute poster boy of obsession. He, oh, yeah. He, oh, but but oh. All, those, all those guys. Poster boy. They don't obsess over the, over the wins. I bet you if, if we brought, if Wayne Gretzky on right now, he's obsessed over not winning the Stanley Cup for the Rangers. Yeah, with, with his buddy Mark Messier. True winners aren't gloating over their one win. Oh, 20 years ago. So they focus on what what might have been because that that's a, a winner never never parties about. Hey, I graduated in 1991. My my I was thriving in 1991. No matter what, yesterday. Or 30 years ago, 31, it's all in the past. What are you going to do today? So I have a friend of mine. I have a lake house in Georgia. And uh, the guy who owns the property next to me is on the, uh, he's, he's on the uh, um, board of regents for the University of Alabama. He knows Nick Saban really well. And I was talking to him one day about Saban. And when he said he had called Saban to congratulate him on one of his many national championships. He said the first thing Saban said was, yeah, that cost me three weeks of recruiting. And that's true. It and, is true. Yeah. And the reason why LSU, even though they had two mediocre years, he brought the fundamental 24 hour rule to LSU. Yeah plus a national championship celebrate your wins or your loss for one day and move on and move on and the same for your mistakes exactly you know, we, you know I, I i'll i'll have someone call me up uh, you know th this happens every week they'll they'll lose a deal something went wrong you know they're mad because they had that money spent before they even got it and they're screaming and screaming and screaming. And I'm like, okay, repeating this over and over, beating the dead dog over and over is not going to bring it back. Go out in the yard, you know, you know, yell at the dog, yell at the sky, do whatever it is you got to do for five minutes, and then realize you can't change it. You got to realize where it was that you fucked up and, and go back and fix it. Amen. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it, you know, it's like, like in sales, if they, if they, if they tell me they had to think about it, I'll say, where did you not bring them the urgency? If they tell me it was too expensive, where did you lack in showing them the value? You know, because overall, there's always a sale in every transaction. 100%. The seller didn't give them a compelling reason to buy or use the product, buy the services. No compelling reason, no connection. That's all on the seller. The seller 
turned it around the prospect and the prospect sold them every reason why this product this agent whatever wasn't for them yeah i i really believe that that when people tell you that you know the two biggest objections is or you know i got to think about it and or it's too expensive i think those are the two biggest sales objections that that anybody gets you know, I, I don't think, I think 99% of the time, that's not true. It's just an easy way out for them. Oh, but, but the thing is, when, when, whenever you sell anybody anything, the more, you need to do more asking than you do talking. You need to do more listening than, than making statements. Because if you ask people the right questions, if you truly find out what they want and let them know, in the questions that you ask, that you're genuinely there to help them, not just to hustle them and whatnot. A lot of these objections and whatnot just disappear before they even come up. You see, the thing is with communication, which is to me, I'm one it's everything of in sales. Communication is a two way street. A lot of times, the seller already has a second, third, fourth fifth bullet point or their rebuttal ready without actually just taking a step back and listening to what the prospect has to say. Yeah. And you, the, the biggest thing is to find out why, mm -hmm. why, why do you want it? And why is it important to you? Now, my wife owns a, uh, you're going to find this really funny. My, my wife, she owns a, uh, she's a doctor and she has a, a medical clinic and she helps guys grow their hair back. Okay. Hey, that's huge. And so when she started, when she started, you know, she was, you know, it's an expensive procedure and she was having people, you know, guys would come in and women, but mostly guys, they'd come in and she was just talking like a scientist, you know, it's going to do this. It's going to do that. La, 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 la. And, uh, you know, and she wasn't making that many sales. I said, you need to ask them why they want it and why that's important to them. And so one day I'm sitting, I'm, I'm at her office. I'm, I'm in there doing, I don't go there often. I was in there doing something and I could hear her talking to, to someone in the exam room. And it was this guy in his mid fifties who was losing his hair, who had just gotten divorced. And she says, tell me why you want this. Well, I want to grow it back uh, because, you know, I don't want this ball spot here. Well, why is that important to you? Well, I'm just getting, I've just got divorced and I'm dating people. She goes, so you want to sleep with 25 year old girls again. Is that right? He says, well, yeah, actually I do. She says, you roll with me. We'll have you sleeping with those girls in no time. But you <laughs> emotional selling. Yeah. Think about this. Everybody knows timeshare is bullshit. Yeah. So the reason why it sells so well is the emotional emotion connection, emotional tug, emotional selling. They have pictures of their family members of all mm -hmm. these amazing trips. And it's always this, Hey, I bet you can't remember what you got on your 13th birthday, but do you, do you remember that epic trip that you took with your mom and your dad? Yeah. Or, you know, well, your, your family, your kids will thank you many years ago when they're like, dad, mom, thank you for taking me to the Wyndham and paying all this excessive fees and, and all that. No, just, to, just, to, just to create what we used to call RCMs, rocking chair memories, you know? Exactly, exactly. Um, but, but right there, now, if you said, well, if she said the scientific reason behind, who cares? But right there, get laid, look young. Hey, remember that time when you're a friggin' rock star, cock rock, cock rocking it in your 20s. You're just picking up chicks left and right. You had an amazing hairstyle. Boom. Boom. <laughs> well, you know, you know, it, 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 the thing is, is that, you know, Anybody, when you buy anything, okay, when you, when you rip out your credit card for anything, 
you're not really buying something. You're, you're, you're solving a problem. If you're, oh, if you go to a restaurant, you're solving a problem because you're hungry. Um, if you go down the street to the Ferrari dealership and buy a Ferrari, you're solving some sort of issue that you have. Okay. Plenty, plenty, plenty of, um, pr plenty of solutions. Can All right. So, uh, so there's a Ferrari dealership Ferrari. about five miles from here. I know two sales guys that work there. They said it's the easiest sales gig ever because you know, they, they, they don't have to, the, the car just sells itself. People come exactly. in there. They know, they know why they want it, but let me ask you something, Omar. Why? So based on that, knowing that people buy things purely on emotion, doesn't matter what it is, really, they're buying it on emotion. Why is it, do you think that salespeople are so reluctant to use that? If, if they're buying on emotion, why are they so reluctant to use emotion to sell it? Because they don't believe in themselves and they don't believe in the product. Plain and simple. Whenever there's a lack of sales, there's a lack of faith in this item. There's a lack of faith in you. A sale is like asking out a date. If you don't believe in, your, in yourself, if you don't think you're an amazing product, a high-end product, you're going to get no, 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 no. And that's why you, you'll see the guy, the, the guy that looks like Igor or the guy that looks like Shrek. And you don't understand why he's with, with women, a bunch of hot looking women has nothing to do with his pocketbook, believe it or not. It yeah. has to do with his confidence in himself. 100%. I remember this. My mom took me to see Saturday night fever as a kid smoking section on the aisles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know john travolta you know laying pipe getting chicks left and right and you know my mom's only 20 years older than me so it wasn't really age appropriate but at yeah. the time but if you watch that movie the guy worked at an ace hardware store and it was all on confidence and all on his ability because he knew he was it and that's all and that's if somebody can't sell it's a simple reason that they don't believe in themselves they're afraid of hearing no or they can't give a compelling reason because they don't believe in what they're selling whether it's timeshare whether it's insurance if you believe within your gut your heart your body, your body, mind, and spirit, that this is going to solve a problem for the other person, that this, that it would be like horrible not to sell this because this is actually saving this person's life. This is giving them a better future. This is answering a problem. This is solving a problem that they yeah. really need to be solved. Well, I think you can take that even one step further because I think in, in sales or anything like that, what truly separates the great ones from the good ones, the good ones believe the great ones know. Oh, clearly. There's, there's a huge difference between believing and knowing, mm -hmm. you know, and, but, but at the end of the day, a lot of people, a, a lot of sales guys that, that work in our organization, you know, will complain to me that, that they're not getting, you know, they're not getting the sales they need. They're not making the money they, they need to make and whatnot. And I will say to them, why would you expect these people to have any confidence in you when you don't have any in yourself? Exactly. And you know what I would tell And them? I can't make them have that confidence. It's only if they want it. Exactly. I Only if they want this. it. Do you want to know who's at fault? I want you to go to the bathroom. I want you to turn on the light. And I want to look at the reflection in the mirror. It's the man in the mirror. 100%. Right. Sales is the old, they, they say the oldest profession is prostitution. No, it's sales. It's what makes the world go around. The better you can sell, the better life you have. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, everyone is in sales, whether they oh, yeah. know it or not. You know, if, if if you have a car wreck and you're in the hospital and you're screaming and you need some morphine, trust me, you're fucking selling. <laughs> <laughs> Put it to you this way. You're a selling. A newborn, 100% sales, sales baby, sales man, sales woman. 
hey, yeah, I'm, I need to be changed. Let me scream until somebody gets me the fuck out of here and changes my diaper. No, uh, I'm it's... hungry. I, I'll give you a compelling reason to feed me now. Not five minutes from now, not 20 minutes from now, not cry, let, let them cry it out self-soothe. We're, we're all born in sales, just like we don't have fear. Could you imagine if we treated a one-year-old like what we're, we're trying to teach kids at school? to just fit in the box if we're like john no you ain't you you keep on falling why don't you stay down this walking it ain't for you man you, you, you just keep <laughs> on falling just just calm down we'll get you a wheelchair the walking's just not for you but that's that's how we we educate kids is you have to fit in this box screw you and you're selling ability screw you and wanting to learn what you want to learn screw you at let let's let's refine what you're good at why don't yeah. we just well round you at the stuff that you're not good at and let's let's just teach you how to pass a test so we can all look good so near my house is this uh trail that i walk every day it's uh I, part it go it goes through a swamp i call it the swamp walk that i, I go through really nice park they got these elevated things that go over the water and there's a couple of playgrounds. And this is something that I never understood. But one day I'm there and there is this kid, probably, I don't know, four or five years old, minding his own business, playing with his Tonka truck, his mom sitting there. And here comes this other kid and just takes it away from him. The kid gets upset. And he goes to grab the truck back. And his mom grabs him and says, you need to learn to share. And I'm like, what kind of bullshit is that? So <laughs> if I was going to go, what, it, 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 could I just go get an Volvo and take off? You know, hey, you, you need, need to, to learn ride. to share. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. She'd be dialing 911. Exactly. You, you know, it, it, it's so screwed up. But that that's like the participation trophy awards that everybody deserves yeah. a, a medal a ribbon for showing up, a big trophy. Everybody should get the same size trophy. That's not how life no. revolves. That's not you how know, it my, works. My, my ex-wife my ex -wife was a school teacher and we would go, and when my kids were in school, we would go to these awards programs. And, you know, my kids did really well in school, but, you know, everybody got a ribbon. Everybody got, a, got recognized for something. Everyone's a winner. No one's a loser. And I said, What's going to happen to the kid when he goes all through childhood and through high school? You know, no, I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. And he goes through college. He's probably going to hear a lot of that too. Maybe not quite as much. How traumatic is it going to be when he or she gets their first job, they screw up, the boss walks in and says, pack your shit and get the fuck out. You're a loser. <laughs> you know what, what, what's going to happen? Uh, the, my, my ex-wife's best friend would always post no matter what. Oh, my, my daughter came and uh, congratulations, a, a ribbon for 11th out of 13th in science. And it's like, congratulations for fucking what? Yeah. She almost came in last place. Why are you posting that mediocre woke bullshit? Don't, don't post that bullshit at all. She's a fucking loser in my book. Hey, no. science isn't your thing, and that's fine. You showed up, but don't don't have us all kumbaya congratulate you and say you beat out two people. <laughs> Thank God there wasn't a fourteenth place. I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, Omar, if people want to uh, contact you, follow you on Instagram, uh, buy your book, how do they do all that? What if it did work on Amazon, self publish because like your listeners, I know people don't have time for the fluff. It's a hundred pages, simple read, learn from it, use it, implement it. It doesn't work. The book doesn't work. 10X doesn't work. Nothing works. You do the work. Right. I'm not a guru. You have to place, you have to do the work on Instagram face, uh, Omar Madrano 73. I've got videos. Uh, what if it did work is a page on Facebook, join it. There's free information, free videos. 
Omar Madrano on Facebook, completely public. I'm like the St. Jude of um, personal and business development. I'll never turn down anybody. Somebody DMs me, as long as they're not trying to sell me crypto or Forex or, or whatever bullshit or, or losing 60 pounds in two weeks, I always answer and I always help out everybody and anybody. You mean there are crypto people out there? Still, man. I, I get, hey, have you heard of Forex? No, but I'm sure you're going to fucking tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Omar, brother, thanks so much for, for, for being on, man. I really enjoyed talking to you. Uh, you know, Dude, everybody it, it, needs it, to hit him up on Instagram because his Instagram's great. I, I, I watch it every day. It means a lot to be your guest. And I, I take that as an honor and a privilege. And when you told me I'm the first, everybody remembers their first. That's right. Um, and, That's and, right. And, and make sure I, we connect. We're amazing. My organizational skills suck. Believe it or not, I, I outsource that. That's, 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 why, that's why I had to ask you for, for the Zoom link to jump back, back in. But I want, I want you to get with Kayla, 2M and all that, so you can be on my podcast. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I love you, man. Thanks. Hey, thank you.